So in this video, I am going to talk all about Pantones when it comes to enamel pins. So if you are confused by all the different formula guides and color books and you know using it on your computer versus getting a swatch book, all that stuff, I am going to demystify the Pantone process when it comes to enamel pins for you in this video. Before I get started though, um, if you are into enamel pins, be sure to click the bell, subscribe, check out my other videos. There's all kinds of stuff below, uh, but definitely be sure to subscribe. I put out videos on Fridays and if you are into pins, you should probably just subscribe because I talk a lot about just kind of the inside process of running your own pin business. Okay, so if navigating the world of Pantones has been frustrating for you, um, you are in the right place. I have covered it a bit in different videos, like in this one, in Anatomy of a Pin, um, and probably in a couple of others in my playlist uh, for Enamel Pins 101, basically. <laughs> uh, but I wanted to do a special deep dive just on Pantones in this video because I feel like it deserves its own video. Um, I have been making pins since 2016, so I'm going to teach you exactly my process to make it super easy, to make sure your colors are consistent, to make sure you get exactly what you want from your colors every time you make an enamel pin. So let's get started. <laughs> okay, so the first question is what are Pantones? So Pantone is a company that specializes in spot colors and they use a special thing called the Pantone matching system, which is uh, PMS. If you see PMS colors, that's what that means, Pantone matching system. So that's basically a consistent system that printers can use to um, make the colors that you want. So I could be making a pin and use a color from the color picker and say, I want like a warmish, pinkish, bright red. And that could mean so many things to so many people. And the color that I pick out on my screen might not look the same as the color that <laughs> um, the manufacturer uses. So instead of making up ridiculous names for colors, we just say, I want the uh, PMS 199C, which is my favorite red, um, which happens to be a warmish pinkish red. <laughs> Um, so that way the manufacturer or printer or whoever you're using knows exactly what color formulation to use to get the color that you want. Easy peasy. Okay, so there are different types of formula guides for different types of medium. So um, printing on fabric and paper and um, like dyeing enamel for pins, it's all different. So there are lots of different types of formula guides out there. So when I was designing my Eda bag, there were different um, color choices for the fabric for that and they didn't use the same kind of PMS system as you use for pins. So that's something to look out for. When you're using pins, you want to do the solid coated formula guide. So this is what you want. You want solid coated every time. So if you're in Illustrator you and you're looking through the color books, um, you want to find the Pantone solid coated that will have the colors that you need. If you're looking for a formula guide, a physical one to buy, it is solid coated, solid coated, solid coated. It's the only one you need. <laughs> so if you want to get this one, um, this exact uh, color guide, I think actually there's an updated one because um, I've had this one for a few years, but um, I have a link down below for you. Unfortunately, a lot of them, um, they come in, oh, what is my cat doing? Um, they come in sets of two, so there will be um, an uncoated and solid coated together. Um, sometimes you can check eBay and find them where it's just the solid coated one, but I mean, you can always grab them both. Unfortunately, I found the cheapest one I could on Amazon. That's the one linked below. They're usually around a hundred bucks. Uh, just to let you know, it is an investment. So if you are at a point in your business where that's something that you want and you want that consistency in your color and you don't want to have to worry about it, then I highly, highly recommend it. 
I did go a full full year of making pins without it and just kind of picking them from my computer and trusting <laughs> um, so and some things did come out differently than I expected um, so if you are at a point where you want to do this you can use the link below and get the exact guide that you need so if you are someone who's just kind of winging it like I did for the first year, um, let me know. Let me know if you are at a point where you want a um, a guide, a physical thing, or if you're just kind of winging it right now because I know that feeling. So let me know in the comments how you feel about it. If you're like, yes, um, I love picking colors. It's my favorite thing. Or, nope, I'm just flying by the seat of my pants and everything's going fine. <laughs> so let me know in the comments below. I'd love to chat with you about it. Okay, so a reason that you might actually really want to get one of these physical guides is that um, when you're picking things out on the color books on your computer, they are not always the same. I know pastels can be uh, really difficult, especially um, when you're doing it on the computer. There are a lot of colors that I've used that look, I know what they look like in physical form, but when I pick them on the computer, they look totally different. And that's because screens can be calibrated differently. Um, and when you send stuff to your manufacturer, their screen will be calibrated differently. And like if you're taking pictures of stuff and sending photos on your computer, the colors can be all over the place. You think it's gonna be consistent, but it is truly not. Um, so that's why I think it's really great to have this so I can know for sure exactly what color I'm gonna get. Now, there can be some variation. There are humans mixing these colors. So if the color that you get is super off from what you gave them and what you know physically it should look like, um, I think it's good to reach out to your manufacturer and talk about it. I've had mine um, reach out to me preemptively and say, hey, look, this batch actually came out looking a little bit brighter. Here's the difference. What do you think? Is this okay? And then I actually ended up liking the color that <laughs> they mixed better than what I got last time. So it worked out. Um, so definitely keep an open dialogue with your manufacturer about colors, but you will be closer and like basically spot on if you use a physical guide. Plus, bonus tip if I have gotten so um, so much of a stickler about it that I only choose my colors in daylight in natural light so right now the I don't have any lights on there's no spotlights or whatever um, for my YouTube video this is just what my studio looks like um, during the day I have two windows I've got one here and then one right over there and it's amazing I get such good light in the studio so if this is a perfect day for me to pick colors because I know what it looks like in the beautiful bright uh, sunshine I do not pick colors at night when I just have like the um, the light on in the room um, lights at night can tend to be warmer unless you have you know you have like daylight lights that are calibrated for that um, I would not recommend picking colors um, at night in weird artificial light. I love just using the daylight. Okay, so now we are actually going to hop into Illustrator really quick. If you have been working in Procreate or if you're in Photoshop or whatever, you, you have colors that you know you wanna use, but you also know you need a specific Pantone for them, there's a really easy way to choose that. I did this also in the um what is it called in my kind of illustrator walkthrough i'll link it here so you can see that but i think it's a good tip to have everywhere because i use this all the time <laughs> okay so let's get into illustrator okay so if you have a color that you have moved over from procreate or just whatever file um you have and it's not a pantone all you have to do is head to edit edit colors and recolor artwork. Then click on the palette in the middle right here and choose color books and then Pantone solid coated. Then click okay and your Pantone color has been chosen for you. You can head over to the swatches palette and see the actual Pantone formula um, that you need to share with your manufacturer there. It's easy peasy, it just picks the closest Pantone color uh, to the, um, the color that you had. 
Okay, so that is literally all you need to know about Pantones for enamel pens. It's super easy. Be sure to bookmark this if you need to remember um, the edit colors trick. Uh, I think it's super helpful and I use it all the time. This is literally all of this information I use with every single pin that I've ever made for the last like few years. <laughs> And if you want to use that exact template that I was just working on, feel free to check below. I have a link for you so you can use that exact Illustrator template that I use. This is the one that's approved by um, multiple manufacturers of mine. It's the only thing I use um, to send my own pins to my manufacturers every time and you are free to use it and customize it however you want um so yeah check out down below and um get the template to use for your own pins okay so if you found that helpful please leave me um a paint palette emoji <laughs> i was hoping there would be like another emoji but i couldn't find it i could just find the paint one so paint palette emoji down below if you made it this far if you found this um video helpful <laughs> And um, if you liked it, please hit subscribe and share it with your pin maker friends. And yeah, I will see you in the next video. Bye.